Mist AP41E Teardown. In order to complete this teardown, you will need some tools. A number two Phillips driver, a number one JIS screwdriver, a prior of some sort, a couple guitar picks, a number eight open-ended socket wrench, and you might need a pair of needle nose pliers. This particular access point has a broken RPSMA connector. So we're gonna take it apart and see what's going on with it. In this case, you'll notice that, that it flexes and moves and a good one just sits there and is nice and solid. All right, let's flip it over so we can start taking it apart. At this process, we'll need to start off with a number two Phillips screwdriver or number two GIS so we can take the four screws out on the corners. All right, let's flip it over and take the top off. The top just pries off. You don't need any special tools. You can just use your fingers. And here it is, the inside of the access point. What you see here on the four corners are the RPS mid connectors. And on the middle, you're getting that phased array that they use for triangulating things. And at the top, there's a couple extra antennas. I'm not sure what frequency they're for. Got some Chinese symbols in there. I don't speak Chinese, but I have no idea what they mean. There's the one that's all floppy, if you look at it. All right, now they've taken a look at it, let's take out the four screws that hold the back on. Uh, for these, you're gonna use the JS uh, number one screwdriver. And you just kind of pry up in that slot in the corner and it comes off. It's actually really hard to take off. There's a bunch of those um, thick, sticky uh, heat pads or heat transfer things. Um, so it did take a little bit of effort to take off. And here's the back of the board and we can see all the various components. We've got the radios and we have the Bluetooth component and we've got all the RJ45 connectors, the IoT connector and all the other uh, chips on the board. And here you can see that loose RP SMA connector. Uh, if you look closely at it, there's a little nut at the top and a lock washer. And if you zoom in here, it has a captive nut built into the board and it connects via a cable on the back, which is great, which means we can tighten it down and fix it. And we already found the root cause that we were taking this apart for but hey, let's just go farther and take the rest of it apart. So um, we're gonna take the board off and it uses JAS number one screws again and they're torqued down really tight. So they're actually pretty hard to take off without stripping the screws out. And I think there's just two that hold this board on. And what I didn't realize is later on, it actually has some of that sticky um, heat sink compound on there and it made it seem like it was screwed in, but it wasn't. It's really just held in there with those sticky things so you can just pry it out. This is where you wanna pry to get the board off from the back. I was still trying to figure out how to get the board off. So I said, hey, I'll take off the antenna array. So you undo the four JS number one screws and when you take it off and you disconnect those uh, cable harnesses, there is a ground wire that connects the back that goes through the board. All right, let's take it all the way apart. Here I'm gonna take off the board that holds on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios. So disconnect those uh, antenna cables. I use a little plastic thing because every time I touch them with my fingers, I destroy my fingers. Um, but maybe you're not like me and fingers work just fine. There are five JAS number one screws that hold the board on, um, but there's also a bunch of the sticky thermal compound underneath it. So you can't just slide it off. You actually have to pry it up and then slide it out. All right, make sure you pry from both sides. So pry from the bottom and then go on up to the top and pry from the top. And then when you let go of it, it still kind of sticks a bit more. So you gotta kind of lift it up when you pull it out. It's actually a little tricky. So you can see, there's where all the thermo paste or thermal compound stickers are.
right after I figured out after the two main screws on the board it just had the sticky compound on there um, this is me taking it off and you can see that there are some cable harnesses that are still attached which make it so it doesn't come across cleanly but if you disconnect them from the antenna array on top and take all the tape off and everything then you can get the main board off when it's opened up you can see it's connected via a couple wires for its cable harness and you see the back side of the circuit board uh, there's a little bit of thermal compound on the bottom that looks like it was bent over from the factory so I just reached in there and fixed it also of note you can get to the back side of the RPSMA connectors so you can tighten them down from the back side too but they're captive anyway so you really don't need to disassemble it beyond taking the top off All right, let's take off that, what I think is the Bluetooth chip. It comes off with a couple of JIS number one screws, and then you just pry it out. And that's as far as I wanted to disassemble it, so now I'm gonna put it back together. And it's really just the opposite of the way you disassembled it. So it's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. Um, put all the components back in, and screw the screws back in, reattach all the cables, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's one slightly tricky spot when you're reattaching the cables um, to the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios. You want to make sure you put them in the little slot down there in the right order, otherwise it makes it hard to reattach the cables. Uh, my top antennas got a little bit bent, and um, I just wanted to see what they were, so I took them off, and there's a wire going to them, and then I reattached them. It's only one screw to keep holds them in place. Yep, reattach things using JIS number one screws. Here's the part that I only really needed to do was to tighten down this RPSMA connector using an 8mm socket wrench. Um, I went through all the different sizes and very much an 8mm wrench. I guess you could use a socket if you wanted to, but I like this one. I didn't tighten it down too much just until it was snug. I feel like adding some like blue Loctite on there would help keep it from going detached in the future. So it's kind of interesting, when I was reassembling it, there's a little bit of dot one header that's accessible from the outside. It's probably used for programming the access point before it leaves the factory. Alright, thanks for watching guys.